No more bad words, David Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> And we are live. Okay, guys. So it's eight or six. I'd say we get this started. Some people might join us later. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm going to move you on my other screen. It's great to be here one more time. Tonight, we're going to talk about score sheet. Uh, it's great to have all these people on a Thursday night. Clearly, we are in lockdown. If you rather spend time with me learning about a manual to fill in a score sheet. But um, it's great what Volleyball Island is doing. As you know, this is part of a two week, um, is it two weeks or five weeks? Five weeks, sorry. It's a, it's, a five, it's a five week program with lots of activities. And this is part of that. Uh, we've also received quite some good coverage on media. Um, if you haven't seen that yet, um, chat me privately and I'll send you the links of the um, papers that are talking about us and what we're doing while we're in lockdown and we can't do volleyball on court, but we can certainly use the time wisely to do activities like this. So today we're going to talk about score sheets. I know that I see a lot of uh, referees there in the audience, which is great, probably for some of you is just a, a, a refresher or just an opportunity to take some, ask some questions, um, take some takeaways from uh, a scorekeeper. I'm doing score sheets for a long time. And so I've been asked to deliver this course with you. Now, as I said, we're gonna go through the actual manual that um, teaches you how to fill in the score sheet. Um, we were thinking, um, and Connor, correct me if I'm wrong, that we will make this presentation available or some form of it in, on our website so that this will actually become uh, the um, reference document. So you can always go back and refer to it. But I wanted to spice things up a little bit because, guys, I need to, to keep you entertained. Otherwise, after five minutes or saying click here, click there, or rather check here and check this box, we're going to go very low with participation. So we're gonna take a different approach to this and we're gonna start with something that is usually at the end of every presentation. And that is, what questions do you have about score sheets? Now, do you guys have access to the chat? Because what you can do, is there a chat box available? Can somebody tell me? Of course. Yeah. There is. Yes. So if you have, que what questions do you have about the score sheet? If you can put them in the chat, that would be great. So take just one minute or two to think about the questions that we have. And hopefully by the end of tonight, we're gonna be able to cover all those questions. By the way, I don't see the chat myself. I have Connor monitoring the chat for me. So if you're asking me a question and I'm not answering to you, either uh, speak up or I'm not ignoring you, I will come back to you or Connor will give me a sign. There is a question waiting for me. Are questions coming through, Connor? No? You're not yet, no. We just had a confirmation from Maria that the chat box is alive and working. Seems like people don't have questions. They really missed volleyballs of any sort and they wanted to spend time with me. <laughs> Anything at all? No, but um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just update you as they come in because I'm sure people probably have questions okay. as we move through the sections. Okay. So by short of hands, and I cannot see many of you, but <laughs> those that are on camera. Hi, Ben, Benny. <laughs> uh, by short of hands, how many of you have done a score sheet before? Okay, that's grand. So, um, okay. So some have never done it. Some are referees and probably they went straight to the referee path and they haven't done it. So let's go into the content and we'll see where this takes us. Now, with regards to the scorekeeper responsibilities, if you open the uh, Volleyball Ireland referee handbook and I put the, the link there, you actually have a small section on page six 
about what the responsibilities are. I should also have a, a can you see the, the referee guidelines? Yeah. If we go on page six, which is the, si the same uh, screenshot that I took, you have what the scorekeeper is supposed to do. So it is a high level um, explanation of what the scorekeeper does. It doesn't explain how to fill in the score sheets uh, step by step, which is what we will cover tonight. But it gives you a good overview of what um, of what a, a good scorekeeper should be doing, um, or actually, without the good of every scorekeeper should be doing. One thing that I wanted to highlight and stress out to all of you, uh, whether you are referees or you are um, becoming score scorekeepers or both, the one important thing is that. A scorekeeper is part of the match officials, okay? And they have the exact same importance of all the other match officials. They have different responsibilities, that's for sure. And if we want to rank them, obviously the first referee has the highest range of um, responsibilities, but don't underestimate the role of a scorekeeper. Ultimately, the scorekeeper is compiling a the document of the match, you know, and this is an official document, and there have been matches decided on what was recorded on the score sheet. So it's very important that when you are taking on board the duties of a scorekeeper, you do it diligently. You don't uh, miss out on things, and you you come prepared to a match. You should be 100% sure what um, what your role is, what your responsibilities are, and if you deliver a proper job there you would basically help the second referee and the first referee. And, you know, it's a teamwork as such. A, score, a good scorekeeper is a match official. So don't forget that, okay? So this continue on, on the second page. There's also um, explanation on what the uh, scorekeeper should be doing when they're with the finished filling in the, the, the score sheet, which is the, the sign to raise two hands. And we will take a look at this later. I think that there's somebody, uh, probably it's Benny that has some um, alerts. And when they pop, I can, see, I can hear it. I don't know if you if you want to mute your your mics if you're not talking that'd be great. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's go back to the presentation. And again, if you have any questions, oopsie, I lost my presentation. Great, there it is. Give me two seconds, guys. Technology. Here it is. Okay, you should be seeing my presentation now. Okay, so now this is what a completed score sheet looks like. I know that it can seem a little bit overwhelming, but what we will do tonight, we will break it down in small parts and we will take it from there and we will go step by step and cover every section. Now, this, um, document that explains how the score sheet is filled is used for all volleyball island events in Ireland. It's also used by schools. And remember that the, the only ink that is allowed to complete the score sheet is either blue or black. Also, one tip that it's important to remember is that um, when you fill in the score sheets, uh, block capital letters is what you should be using. That's the supposedly what everybody is able to read. Whereas if you use your normal handwriting, it can be not readable as such. Okay, so we're gonna break it down in parts and we're gonna talk about what uh, the pre-match responsibilities are. There is one pre-match -responsibility, pre responsibility that is not there, and that is when is the scorekeeper present themselves? I've seen scorekeepers coming five minutes before the start of the game, or even at the start of the game, and some after the start of the game. So let's make sure that the scorekeeper uh, is there at least at the very minimum for the official warm up time. They should be there because they're supposed to fill in responsibilities that are not 
the first uh, referee or the second referee responsibilities, but it is the, um, the scorekeeper who, as I said, is a match official. Before the starting of the game, um, you obviously need to fill in the match details that you will find from the Volleyball Ireland website, which means the, the name of the teams, the name of the competition, the, um, the venue, etc. Then you need to record the team lists and you need to also record who the referees are in the approval section. As part of the COVID restrictions, the only um, person that is entitled to touch the actual score sheet is the scorekeeper only. In relation to pens, everybody that sh should have their own pens to sign the score, um, the score sheet. So remember that. And again, remember that uh, you are you are, you are um, responsible for compiling this document. I'm going to pause real quick if there are any questions there. And I need to find. The question came through, but it's in relation to sanctions. So maybe we can just hang on to the sanctions section. For okay, that perfect. Just to clarify the method more. No problem. Okay, so. Basically, this is just screenshots of where uh, those topics that we've covered go. On the top, you have the intro of the game. So the name of the competition, the match venue, the division. As I said, you find all of this in the Volleyball Ireland um, website and you stick with the information that are available on the website as much as possible. This is just a close up of where you put the, the name of the competition. So, okay, this is a quite an overwhelming slide and there will be a lot of this guys uh, because this is a manual as we said. So instead of you going with your eyes everywhere, just follow me and we will go, we'll take a look at this together. We're gonna go counter, uh, counter wise. So this is the part where you fill the competition. So if it's a national league, uh, then you go into the match venue. So this is a UCD, the University College of Dublin. Then uh, the time that it, that's the game it's scheduled to start at. So that's um, what's on the website. So if the match is at three o'clock, you put three o'clock. Uh, if then the match starts is at 3.15, that's fine. Uh, you will put it, you will record it somewhere else, but this is the actual official time um, of the game. Then the, the letter that goes on these circles, they will be decided after the official have done the coin toss. And moving on, you have the date where the game is played on. You have the two teams that are playing. Now, always remember that the home team is listed on the left. You always go first. And this is also in the section where you register the, the teams. And then obviously what, uh, if it's a men or women game and what division that is, okay? And this is without all the explanation. So how it should look when it's clean and all completed. On the bottom right hand side of the score sheet, you have the, the places where the teams are registered. And again, the home team goes to the left and the visiting team go to the right. Okay, now let's start taking a look at the left hand side and then we'll go to the right hand side. So after you have the coin toss from the referee, the team you know that is uh, at the left of the scorekeeper is going to be a team A and the team that is going to be at the right of the scorekeeper is going to be team B. So A and B is not related to home and away team, but it's only who starts on the left of the scorekeeper and who starts on the right of the scorekeeper. One uh, piece of advice is that you put the the full team name at the at the top of the score sheet, but then you put in bracket a three letter acronym. So for example, you have UCD versus TCD. If you have net for score, you can use NFC, whatever makes sense. The most important thing is that it matches in both sections and we know what you're talking about. Um, the player's name and the registrations number are also filled in. So you usually you have, the name of the player, the, and then their, their full name and the registration number on the registration section. 
if you have a libero, the libero doesn't go on the full list above, but there is a dedicated section at the bottom. Then let's move on to the column on the right. Um, remember that the captains of the team should always be uh, circled, should have their number circled. Then the bottom part, it's uh, in relation to uh, teams officials. And that is the, the head coach, the assistant coach, the, um, the trainer and the medical, which are registered there. And they should also have um, their registrations there. Um, wait, I can see the chat now. I'm going to go quickly there and see if there are any chats. OK, there is an observation from Colette, and that is that there is more than 12 players per team in here. Is there? I, I didn't count them. Yeah, there is 12 plus the Libero. Now, who's going to check the rules there? I think that's uh, per rule. You should have 12, including the Libero. Is that right? In Can here, you, yes. Was that? Yeah, in here, yes. Yeah. So I think that was just something that we've overlooked. We will take a note and we will correct it. Is that okay, Connor? Yeah. Again, I don't see the. Where are the. Uh, I think I lost the. I have the participant list, but I, I have lost the the screen with the um, cameras. That's fine. So guys, again, I cannot see your faces right now. So if you have, if you, if you're talking to me, make sure you're not on mute. One important thing is that after the first and the second referee um, have performed the coin toss, the yes, uh, the captains and the head coach should verify the, uh, the team list and then sign the score sheet. Okay, so this is done at the very beginning, then the team captain will also sign the score sheet at the end to formalize that everything that is recorded on the score sheet is um, official. Any questions, anybody? I don't see any questions there. Okay, let's move on. And again, this is just a slide that shows how it, sh it is done uh, clean and nice. Finally, at the, um, the section where the arrow is pointing to is where the referees and the, the other match officials are recorded. This is an example of how the approval section, this is called the approval section, is uh, completed. So the referee for the match must be signed into the approval section of the score sheet before the start of the match. Uh, they will need to record the first and last name and their registration numbers. The other uh, match officials do not have a registration number, so they just go by their full names. Finally, you can see the captain A and B uh, spaces, which will remain blank. That's where they will put the signature at the very end of the game to make sure that everything is uh, formalized. Okay, now. I've got a quick question, if that's okay. Please. Um, you mentioned at the start, because of COVID, the only person that can kind of write in the score sheet to probably write the team list is the scorekeeper, right? I'm assuming that it's okay at the end of the match that you've got your referees and scores will sign the score sheet from a COVID perspective. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, that is indeed correct. They will have to sign, yep. uh, hopefully using their own pens. Okay. Yeah. But definitely, uh, that doesn't alter the rule that Perfect. it needs to be signed. Yeah, that's grand. Okay, thank you. Alfredo, I have another question. Mm -hmm. Are the COVID officers registered somehow in the score sheet? They are not. Okay. They are not. They are introduced to um, to the official, to the match officials, uh, but we haven't received any. Um, indication that they need to go on the score sheet. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to open a digression on that, but just to answer your question, no. they're not. No, no, that was, was the question. Good. All right, so 
Now, once the, uh, you know who's going to be team A and who's going to be team B, you will also know who's going to start serving and who's going to start receiving. In this example here, the team on the left, um, they, they want the service. So as you can see, you have an, an S for service and an R for receive. And they, you, you're going to mark the S because team on the left in this very example is serving. It could be the other way around if B won the service. So in this case, uh, you're going to leave this uh, open because that's uh, the first turn of rotation. And then you're going to mark the, the first square of team B uh, with an X. The reason for that is that the person that is in position one on team B, when the match starts, will not serve, okay? The first um, player of team B that will serve is whomever starts in position two, okay? All right. So another thing that happens before the game officially starts is that teams will hand the rotation slips to the second referee, and then the second referee will give them to the score keeper to register them on the, on the actual sets, okay? It's very important that uh, you guys know that once the lineup is submitted, so once the coach um, or the captain has given the rotation slip, no further changes will be allowed. One very important thing, and this is a responsibility of the scorekeeper, is to make sure that whomever is on the rotation slip is actually a legit player. By legit player, we means that uh, they are actually registered on the player registrations list. If there are any discrepancies, um, the scorekeeper will need to inform the second referee immediately, and the second referee will know what to do in that case. So as far as what the responsibility of the scorekeeper is, is that if they put in the rotation slips a number three, and number three is not listed there, there is a discrepancy. So it's the job of the scorekeeper to highlight it to the referee immediately, okay? As you can see from here, there's no discrepancy. So as scorekeepers, we're gonna go ahead and record the, um, the players as per the rotation slip. And the way you start is that um, you start from position one and you, do, you go um, counterclockwise. So as you can see, you have, well, in this case, it, it actually matches the, um, the position in course, but the way you write is uh, from position one, um, counterclockwise, and you, you put it on the score sheet. Any questions, anybody? This should be very straightforward. <clears throat> so one thing that is very important is that you need to record the time of the first uh, service. So the first action when you know the, the referee uh, whistle the beginning of the game and the first person goes and serves, that's where you put the start time of the game. The points are... Um, allocated by crossing them off with a diagonal line, as in the example here. And then say, say that number one, you know, um, they went to, to start the game, they served, and then UCD uh, made three points, but at the third rally, they lost the rally and the point went to TCD. To the other match. So in order for you to record this, what you will have to do is to close the, uh, the service turn with how many points that team had when they lost the rally. So in this case, number one served uh, three times, they had three points, then they lost the rally. So that you're going to close uh, the, their rotation turn with the three, and then you're going to give a point to the other team, to TCD, and start the rotation turn for um, whomever goes next, who's the next uh, to serve. In this case, that would be number two. If you go like this uh, and you read the score sheets, what it means is that um, number two then they made another point, but then they lost the rally again. So you close it at two, you give a point 
uh, to UCD, which is going to give them four points. And then number two from the opposite team will go and serve and so on and so forth. So as it reads here, the axis scored to close a rotation box represents the team score when the players has finished serving. Any questions? Don't see any questions there? <clears throat> okay. Now, we have a request from team B. They want to make a substitution, okay? This happens often, and this is where the scorekeeper needs to be ready and quick, and they need to know what to do. So they, they are informed that number nine wants to come in. So the first thing that you need to check as a scorekeeper immediately is that number nine is a legal substitution. By legal substitution, it means that they were not involved in previous substitutions within the same set. Okay, um, and they also, number two, they are registered on the team list. Once those two points are fulfilled, they are legal, so we can record the, the substitution. If it was not a legal substitution, you need to raise your hand and let the, the referee know that the substitution is not uh, legal, it's not legit. We're gonna, check in, we're gonna see in a second how uh, you record the substitution. So here it says that uh, the assistant scorer, which is the person sitting next to the scorekeeper, and it's actually the person that used the, the scoreboards and flipped the points, um, they will probably call out who, um, who is involved in this substitution. So in this case, number eight is replaced by number nine, and the score is five to 12. So as you can see on this slide, number nine is going to replace number eight, and the point is five to 12. Here is a golden rule, guys, and always remember this. And this is the order on, on uh, how you write the score when you uh, record anything on the score sheet, uh, that be a substitution or a timeout. The order is always that the points that go first on the left are the points of the requesting team, okay? So as you can see here, they requested the substitution and the score is 5-12, which means that the requesting team has five and the other team has 12. Simple as, you will see the same when you have to fill in the timeouts. Uh, whatever the score is, you always put on the left the points of the requesting team, okay? Um, Sorry, I have a question. Yes. What happens if the nine substitute with the eight again? Um, do you have to circle one number or maybe you can explain it? You will see it in a second and uh, it will be in the... Um, in the next slides, and this is actually when you complete a substitution. So you're saying that number nine plays a couple of actions and then they go out and number eight comes back in, yeah? Yes. You will see it on the next slide. So oh, all that okay. thought for, for a second. Thank you. No problem at all. Uh, now, once um, the, the, you know, at this moment when you're on game, what, what you're seeing is that you have the score keeper who has raised their hand to say that everything is fine. They are recording on the score sheet. And then in order to let the referees know that um, the game can go on, obviously they're not gonna shout. Uh, remember that the scorekeepers will have masks most likely when we go back. So there is a universal sign that has always been there and has nothing to do with COVID, but that you need to show uh, both hands palms phasing out, I don't know if you can see it on my camera, to signal that the play can resume, okay? And this is the, um, the, signal, the signal that is used by the scorekeepers after every game interruption. Now, to answer the, this, the other question, so the captain has decided or the coach has decided that number nine needs to go out and number eight um, needs to go back in. And One more piece, if I can. Say it again, Savik. Can I say something? Yeah. Just to put the information in here, but the scorekeeper is signaling to the second referee. 
and second referee has to be ready too and he is signaling to first referee okay yeah so obviously the the communication as Swavik said is between the the scorekeeper will signal to the second referee now this everybody should be able to see that dot signal so the communication in this instance is between the two parties but this does, doesn't uh, entails that the first referee will have to wander around they will be um they will be part of that they will know what's going on they will need to follow as well but as Swavik said the second the the scorekeeper will will sign will signal the second referee then the second referee will give the go ahead to the first referee yeah makes sense that's exactly <laughs> perfect thank you for that um now as to answer the other question uh number nine now is going out and here the the score is 12 to 22. So the team is actually losing. And as I said earlier, the golden rule is that you first put the, the points of the requesting team and then on the right, the points of the other team, okay? When the, um, the substitution is completed, so in this case, we have a complete substitution, you need to circle the, the player that has completed the substitution. So in this case, the circle around number nine indicates that uh, number nine may not re-enter the set, okay? Now, there are uh, extreme uh, circumstances, but these are extreme circumstances and exceptions that are uh, regulated by the rules is not actually um, the scorekeeper's responsibility, but for exceptional substitutions, the referees will give indication to the scorekeepers on what to do in those cases. Okay, so now we have a situation where the coach from team A has requested and is granted a timeout. And again, as you can see, they are winning because clearly they are 22-21. And as we said earlier, the, what we write on the left-hand side is the time of the requesting team. Sorry, not the time, the points of the requesting team. The timeouts are recorded on this box here. And that's pretty much it. The coach from team A has also requested the second timeout. As you know, that there are every team has two timeouts per uh, set. And again, they are they're losing on this occasion. And as you can see, the the score is telling you that they requested the second timeout when they were losing 23-22. Uh, Any questions there? It's very straightforward, yeah? Now, very important, once the, uh, the set is won by one of the team, in this case, uh, TCD won the first set, one of the responsibility of the scorekeeper is to cross off all the remaining points that uh, were not accrued by any team, okay? So that's to make sure that um, there's no misunderstanding afterwards. And we clearly see that the points with the diagonal were the points that were accrued during the game. And then all the others are simply crossed with a vertical line and they will not be reused. Now, before moving on and starting preparing to the next set, you need to remember that you need to look at your uh, watch and record the, the end time of the first set. That was quite a lengthy um, set. It lasted 30 minutes, but the score was 25-22. So it, um, it went very long. Any questions before we continue with this? Alfred, I have one. I don't know if it is. If the scorekeeper um, detected like a um, position or rotation fall, so he or she tell the second referee or that's not the scorekeeper um, duty? There is only one uh, instance where the scorekeeper is involved in a rotation fault. And it's only when, if somebody is going to serve, 
okay? Say that uh, according to the score sheet, number three should be serving. And the scorekeeper mm -hmm. sees that actually number another number is there and it's not them, somebody that is substituting number three, but the team just messed around. If the other match officials don't pick up on that, then immediately after the serve, the scorekeeper needs to inform the second referee. They need to give them okay. a sign or they need to alert them that there's been a rotation fault, in which case the team will lose, will lose the point and they will rectify the rotation and the game will continue. All other instances where there is a rotation uh, fault, that's the second referee responsibility, it's not the scorekeeper. Perfect. Does it answer, Maria? Completely, very clear, as usual. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so what we've uh, covered so far, guys, it goes on and on for, for the remaining of the game. So all other sets, except the deciding sets, and the deciding set is the third set if we're playing on a three set game, or the fifth set if we're playing on a five uh, set match. They're all the same. There are a few differences on the deciding sets, which we will see in, uh, in a second. And there is one um, difference that goes, uh, that is very logical, and that when teams uh, flip side of the court, the same is reflected on the score sheets. So in this case, TCD that started as team B on the right, on the second set is gonna be the team on the left. As, a, as you can see, the team name is following uh, on the score sheets and also the letter is. Equally, the team is now going to serve because they started the game uh, receiving. So in this case, they will serve first and the other team UCD will receive. One thing that is very important to know, and this is also responsibility of the scorekeeper. Obviously, it is responsibility of the of the referees. They do know, but the scorekeepers should know that the gap between set is three minutes. So, if the previous sets ended at fourteen thirty, they can go ahead and write fourteen thirty three. Now, this is an example of deciding set, and this is what I alluded a moment ago. So the deciding set is uh, set three in a best two of three match or set five in a best three of five match. So the design sets works in, in, in the exact same way with a few additions to it. So obviously, as you know, before a deciding set starts, there is another um, coin toss to set who's going to to decide who's going to be at the left of the um, of the court and who's going to be at the right. This in this instance, A or B can also uh, can also change because they can be the result of the coin toss. So let's have a look at what we have on the slide, and then if there are any questions, we will cover them. So be aware of the deciding set coin toss conducted by the official in front of the score, scorer's table. Uh, fill in the three letters um, team abbreviation. So in this case, TCD starting on the left and UCD starting on the right. Fill the A and B um, on the result of the coin toss. Put an X over the respecting uh, service or receive for each team. Put an X in the first box of the receiving team. Verify the lineup. Uh, against the team list before writing the player number of the score sheet and initial uh, the backup of the lineup cards. So same, um, same as we did before. However, the only thing that you need to remember here is that there will be another uh, coin toss to decide who starts on which side of the court. Any questions? Can I have a stupid question? <laughs> no, no question is stupid. Okay. Uh, what if the points are more than 30? Is it 31, 32, 33, whatever? Because I can see that points just end with 30. Mm. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not a stupid question because um, I'm going to try and make it up. I don't have the official answer to that. Um, I, I believe that it is um, possible. It can definitely happen. Um, however, statistics are very low that we, it will happen. 
Um, it's something where, you know what, I have no problem to say, I don't know. It's something that probably I will take uh, offline and get back. Um, Con Connor, can you take a note of this? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if somebody if somebody knows the answer, keep the answer for the Q and A in the end, and we will cover then. I have a, a doubt, Alfredo. Me again. Um, the letter A and B are carried out during the whole match, isn't it? If, uh, for example, C C D is B, it's going to be B, regardless what the toss said, isn't it? In the fifth set. It is. Did I say that they change? No, I, I don't know. I got confused with the third and fifth set. Maybe, maybe I did confuse you. But yeah, what I mean is that, you know, um, all I meant is that if on the first game, uh, of, on the very first set, team A started on the left and it was just a, you know, casual because this is how the uh, the set started on uh, on the deciding set you may have a difference but you're right tcd will always be team b that will not okay. change yeah Perfect. sorry if i made some confusion earlier on no more okay okay so we're gonna move on and now here's what happens where as you probably know when, on, during the deciding set uh, once uh there's a team that reaches eight points, then the teams will uh, will change the side of the course. Um, and the way the this works is that the scorekeeper will have to transcribe the information for the team that started on the left hand side on the uh, box on the right hand side. They will need to also put how many points they had when they changed, and they will start uh, filling the um, and it will start filling the the points as to who is next on service. I'm going to show you in the next slide what I mean. Give me just a couple of seconds, and we're going to take a look um, very slowly on this one. So, this is a, decide, a deciding set at the very beginning. The only boxes that a scorekeeper is using are the first box and the middle box. We have put a square on the last box because it's not being used. For the first eight points of the set, only look at this uh, left part of the sheet. Um, in this one, the, the scoring example is broken down into three sections. Start of the set through until the first time out, TCD is, um, at one, uh, they are losing one to five. Then from the first timeout until the first substitution, TCD are um, at three, six. And from the first substitution until the change of the court, that's what you're going to uh, record on this, um, on this part of the score sheets. Then what's happened next is that, um, I think it's gonna be UCD here that, that will, uh, will make eight points. So UCD is making eight points. So the two teams are flipping sides. So the scorekeeper in this case is recording the exact same rotation on the other side of the, um, of this, the score sheets. Okay. Um, during the change of the courts, uh, as a scorer, the following must be completed record the points of change. So this is only the points of the team that is changing and is going to the right. Then uh, points of change refers only to the number of the points scored by this team. You need to remind the second referee uh, who the next survey is on each team to make sure that the, the both teams are positioned correctly on the, on the court. And they can also check their own uh, team rotations after the change of court is completed. From this moment on, what you will be doing as a scorekeeper, you will only work on this two square, where you have UCD on the left and TCD on the right hand side. And this is exactly what's going to happen if you imagine the game, the two teams will have swapped. So now the scorekeeper will have UCD on the left hand side and TCD on the right hand side of the court. Any questions there?
So in this case, um, when they are changing, as you can see, we're not going to write again the points that TCD had uh, accrued on when they were on the left side of the court, but only the substitution that they had. The only piece of information transferred to the right hand side of the score sheet is the substitute number. Not even when they entered, you don't have to rewrite it here. You will only put uh, below if number nine left and, and they went out. None of the other information on the left hand side of the score sheet is transferred to the right hand side. Once the uh, change of the chord is complete, then you continue using the right portion of the score sheet. And here there are a couple of things that we've noted down for you to notice. Um, TCD, which in this case is team B, they had a second substitution where completed the eight and nine substitution. So when they were 13, 13, number nine left. So as we said earlier on, we circle the, the substitution. Then TCD, uh, TCD third substitution in the set, sorry, let me just, TCD third substitution in the set at 1313. The substitution at 1313 is recorded in the bottom space because this is the second exchange between this pairing. And also there is another um, piece of information and that is that TCD won the final set 1513. In this case, you can see that 15 is recorded here and 13 is recorded there, which is the final score of the other team. I know that following the score sheets um, online is a new experience and this is the first time that we deliver such a course. So bear with us, it will be very important that you give us feedback has uh, to how we can improve this. Usually the best way to teach how to complete the score sheets to someone is when you do it live and you know there is a direct knowledge transfer and it makes a lot more sense when you are during the game but uh, it's still great that we are trying to deliver this and people can give time to this. I don't expect you to be 100% um, on the score sheets on your first attempt. If you are great, happy days. But my recommendation is that you obviously um, learn and have a refresher with somebody that has done it for a while and they can actually teach you, which is how you would have normally uh, learned uh, doing this. The other thing that we will do in the future is that you will be uh, providing this manual so that you can read it up front so that you will have the knowledge first and the delivery, should be, uh, the delivery of the content should be also uh, smooth. Sorry, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you write the first substitution at the team B when eight and nine were switched? And why don't you write the first time out of team B in the um, second sheet when they switched? So you're asking me why this uh, substitution is not copied yes. there, right? Yes, Because and the time out. The logic is that everything that was recorded when team, everything that happened when team B uh, was on the left stays on the left. If you copied that here as well, and you saw the score sheets afterwards, and you wanted to read what happened during the game, you would know um, when number nine went in, if it's reported in both sides of the, of the score sheets. Okay, mm -hmm. so everything that happened on the left hand side stays on the left hand side, and then everything that happens on the is on the right hand side. It sounds like the fight club, pretty much. <laughs> okay, so you have to pay attention if they have a time out and look at the left. Okay. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Thank Absolutely. you, Alfredo. Could yeah. you mark in the when when Team B goes to the right? Can you mark or do some mark for you not to make a mistake? You know, can you cross the first? Um, square where um, not so as part of uh, the final um, I'm trying to think <laughs> no you can't say no you can't and that's it yeah no the answer is that not you cannot because actually that's you it. should be you should be able to do it without making mistakes. It's part of your responsibilities to do it right and to know that uh, when you're talking about team B, you always need to keep an eye on what happened on the first uh, eight points. 
on the left hand side. Um, yeah, so that's actually the official answer. I know that you will Perfect. be crossing off that at the end, but uh, no, the answer is no. Perfect. Can I have an answer as well? Mm -hmm. So when, uh, let's say the PCD, it didn't be like I can see, the first uh, server didn't make a point, zero. Mm -hmm. So it goes immediately to first server in a team A, it's mm -hmm. point. Like the first server has three points, but basically you made just two serves good. Is it that or not? Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. it, you nailed it. That's exactly what's happening. So if you're reading, if we want to really read what happened here, as you rightly said, they started the game at 1533, number 13 went to serve, they didn't score any points. So they finished the turn at zero. Yeah. Then clearly number two, they had Me gained already one point. They made two other points and then they lost the rally. Uh, they lost the, um, the serve. So they closed at three and then they went back to, um, to yeah. team B. Team B so again, they didn't make any point because they closed at number one. So number one was the point that they, they made at the at the change yeah um oh okay so also no actually no uh sir well they didn't make a point obviously because they, the they won other, the rally but yeah. then after number two served they did not make a point because oh, okay. uh, number two finished their turn and the team had one point only so they went there okay so again this one point goes to to the next server who actually mm hasn't served yet or whatever. Correct, correct. Yeah. 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 Goes to the other team, not to the server, but goes to the other yeah, team. But we write it to under the server. Well, no, you, you're not writing it under the server. You're crossing the points that, so for example, let's start from the beginning. Number 13 serves and they serve uh -huh. out, okay? Uh -huh. You put zero because their team finished at zero yeah. and you're not going to give any point to number two. You just given a point to the team. So mm -hmm. you put the point here. Then number two makes two serves, they make mm -hmm. two points, and then they lose the action. So when number two finished their uh, serve turn, they had the team had three points. So you put three, and then it goes the other way around. Yeah, yeah, I got it, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. No problem. Was there another question, someone? Yeah, sorry, I have a small one. <laughs> Uh, when the teams switched and TCD, for example, made a point, and then that will be the eight point of them, you don't have to cross one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the right hand side, or you start at the eight. Correct. So in this case, I don't know if I uh, picked on something or maybe I misunderstood. In this case, it wasn't TCD to make the eighth point, it was UCD. Yes. So they, they finished. So UCD reached the eighth point. They only did eight. So you don't need to copy again the seven points. Okay. It indicates that the seven points were gained when TCD was on the left hand side of the court. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Was that your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Any more questions on this? Just cautious of the time. So, guys, I'm going to powered through the end because we're almost there. So when the set is finished, uh, obviously you cross off the points that were not gained. And one important thing that the scorekeeper should be doing in between sets is that during the intervals is that you start filling in the result table. The result table basically, uh, again here, there is a lot of um, information. So the, the results table indicates uh, how many timeouts, substitutions, who won the set and how many points each team made. So in this example, UCD had two third timeouts on the first set, zero substitution. They didn't win the set. In fact, they only had 22 points. The set lasted 30 minutes. And then on the other side, TCD had 25 points. They did win the set. So you're gonna put a number one when they win. Uh, they had two substitutions and zero timeouts. You're going to be completing this um, in full. This is a five set uh, game. And then at the bottom, you need to tally up the totals and you need to make sure that they match. Okay. The, the duration as well, you're going to put together the 
um, the total of the minutes. And then finally, you need to put who won, in this case, TCD one by three, two. There is a lot of wordings there, but it's pretty much what we would have uh, told you in a couple of seconds. And as I said, this document will be made available to you afterwards. So you can go back on the website and, uh, and have a reference there. So that's the same slide with less um, wordings on it. Now, somebody asked about sanctions. So um, if sanctions or disciplinary actions are uh, happening during the, the game, they are being recorded on the bottom left-hand side of the score sheet. And the way they are recorded is that, uh, now, if a team is causing a delay and, and you know the referee will, will tell you that there is a delay, you're going to put a D. Um, if it's a warning, you put the D under the warming. Uh, the delay is for team A in this case. It happened on the second set. And the score when the delay happened was 12-15. So 12 is the score of the team that caused the delay. OK. Uh, to record a delay penalty, uh, you're going to put the D under the, uh, the P column. Um, and then you record again the team, the set, and the score. One uh, thing that is very important uh, not to overlook is that at the bottom of the sanction section, you have a little uh, explanation on what you should put and where. So you don't need to come up with uh, the letters without knowing. You simply read what's in there. Can we delay like the, the penalty, the first, not the warning? They don't need to warn them first, but give them penalty immediately? That's something for a referee. Um, I'm going to park it for now and see if we're going to have um, somebody, some referee here that <laughs> is going gonna, is gonna to able to um, to answer that. But because it's not really a responsibility of the scorekeeper, mm -hmm. we will uh, we'll take we'll park it for now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the referee will say like it's a penalty, and you write it under the penalty. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the case, I would imagine that this is what happened. This is a quick explanation of what the other um, initials mean. Um, now, to record a warning, there are a lot of penalties happening or sanctions happening on this on this match. So basically, um, to record the warning, basically, you, sh you put the, for a, for a player, for example, you know, a player is misbehaving, number two of team B is misbehaving, they get a warning. So you put the, the number of the player that has received the warning, the team they belong to, when in which sets they got it, and what was their score when they were sanctioned, mm -hmm. OK? To record the penalty, same story. Uh, penalty are, penalties are applied through the use of a red card. Mark the player number or abbreviated team member. In this case, C stands for cap for coach. Sorry. If it was a captain, you would simply put the number of the captain, the team, the set, and the score. To record a, an expulsion, same thing. Uh, expulsions are applied through the joint use of a red and yellow card. Mark the player number or be it in team member and the disposal column, record the team, the set and the score. Same story for all of them. Now, if remarks are required, remarks of any kind, they will be recorded in the remarks section. One very important thing is that the remarks are written in English, number one. Um, number two is that you keep it factual. So if you are a scorekeeper of UCD, so they're the home game, for example, instead of saying uh, Mary got injured on the second set where the score was three, um, three to five, you should put number X of team uh, Y got injured at this score. So make sure that somebody that is reading the score sheet afterwards that they wouldn't know who Mary is, um, will not have to, you know, break their head understanding what, uh, what's written in there. Does it make sense? 
So uh, what goes on the remarks is improper request, um, technical timeouts applied for uh, blood, change of uniforms due to blood, protest, exceptional substitutions, what um, I said at the very beginning, unusual delays. Now, at the end of the match, it's very important that the first referee will uh, initial the remark section. So in this case, uh, Frank Roberts uh, put their initial there. That's why you have um, FR. And if we, if you read real quick, there is a first remark, uh, one minute technical timeout applied in set three at 22.18. Then there is another one there, uh, team B player number seven was bleeding. Uh, then there is a second remark, and that is that a fire alarm sounded and a facility was evacuated. Um, team A, current server number eight, uh, so this is who was the current server where when the the, the facility was was evacuated because you know ultimately the teams will go back so you need to know what was happening at that time. So always be um, factual in what you write there, and always think that you're writing things that may be read afterwards. So if somebody needs to go back and see, okay, where we're at, where we were at when the um, the remark happened, they should be able to find that out from the notes that you put on the remarks. Can I mention something? Yes, please do. Colette. Just on the remarks. Um, you can't go ahead and write something in it regarding if there's a dispute or protest. You need to clear it with the referee first because there's only certain times you can write on the score sheet it has to be through the referee during the match. They have to advise them they're putting in a protest and they're going to write in the score sheet. <clears throat> so you can't just let, for example, the captain at the end of a game who said nothing to the referee during a game come over and write on a score sheet. Exactly. Hear that with the referee before you do it. Yeah, that's a very good point. Guys, the scorekeeper, um, they're playing as a team with the two referees. So everything that has happened should be, as Colette said, um, authorized by the referee when it comes to the remarks. So communication is key in that sense. Um, they cannot just write remarks as they please. A remark um, you know, should be put there if uh, there is a go ahead from the referees. Thank you, Colette. Now, very important, and I apologize that we are slightly delayed today. Um, we've added a new section on the score sheets, which I'm going to um, show you what it is. It's actually on the um, bottom left hand side of the score sheet. This is a close up of what there is. And this is a score sheet checklist. It's a checklist that the score keeper needs to fill in. Now, obviously, the referee, as part of their responsibility to review the entirety of the score sheets, they will need to check it again. But it is um, within the scorekeeper's responsibility to fill this in. It's only four questions, guys, that you need to record. And it's a yes, no answer. So you just need to know what they are. The first one is players playing up. If you don't know what that means, imagine CD um, or I don't know, Tala Rockets. I think Tala Rockets has Premier. So you are on a Premier game and you have somebody from uh, first division playing on that game. Okay. If you have such a situation, you know, there are, this is all uh, regulated by the competition rules. Uh, players can play up to a certain number of time. So if that occur during the game, you need to put a yes. Now you may be wondering, how do I know if I have a somebody from another category? When you're handed the, um, the team uh, registrations, you should see on the registration card of the player if they are registered on which division. So in that case, uh, you can immediately see if uh, there is somebody that is not a premier player, perhaps they are a first division player and they're taking part of that game. So in that case, if you had a situation as such, you would put a yes. 
The second point is a registration. As you probably know, if you have attended the, the, the referee bootcamp, you might know that if you haven't, uh, don't worry, but a registration query is if, if uh, something related to player's registration came up, something that is not clear, it needs to be flagged as a yes. Probably this will follow with a remark on the score sheet. But now it is a rule of this year that if players don't have a registration number on their registration card, they cannot play. Still, um, so in the old days, you would put a registration query for such a case where the referee would still let them play. As of this year, this is no longer allowed. However, if you know team B has a question or a query about a player of team A, uh, and they've raised the concern with the referee, but you know the referee let the game go ahead, then if there was a question about a registration this is when it needs to be marked as a yes. So when everything goes well and there's no um, questions about registrations, usually you should put a no there, but if anything related to registration came up during the game, you will mark it as a yes, and then the referee will put a remark and then the office will follow up on whatever was raised on this section. This score sheet checklist, by the way, is used by the office when they review the score sheets. And it's a, you know, it's just a checklist to make sure that if there are any alerts or anything that we need to be worried about in the office, we have a visual uh, already from the, from the score sheets. The third point is if there were any protests. If there were any protests, uh, you would mark as yes. If everything was smooth and no protests, you would mark as no. And equally, if there were any disciplinary actions, like all the sanctions that we saw on the examples earlier on, you would put a yes if there were any disciplinary actions or no if there were none. Questions on this one? This is new, so I'm expecting some questions on this. I have. I'm a little bit slower than usual. When you were talking about um, player playing up, it's like, for example, someone for Premier playing first division, isn't it? So it's yeah, like it's go down the other or way go around. Down. It's okay. the other way around. Someone earlier. from first division playing Premier. Correct. Ha or second division oh. playing first division. Playing or, first division. Now, um, you have a player playing up and you say yes, but do you record that there somewhere, somewhere the player who is playing up? Otherwise, how do you know how many times that player has been playing up? You know what I mean? Um, Colette, on this one, help me from, yeah. uh, you put it on the remarks, don't you? You put it in the remarks, okay. you count the number of sets. Mm -hmm. So if you have a five set game, but they only played two, you put down number nine played two sets. Oh, mm. you put that exactly. on the score sheet. Yeah. And then it's the office responsibility to yeah. keep that player, count yeah. the tally count of how many sets has he they played. They count how many sets the player plays up. And if they yeah. play up over a certain number, I'm not sure what the number is, they automatically have to go up to Premiership or up the next yeah. level. Okay. And they are not allowed to play anymore? Back in the in previous that, In that division, yeah. If yeah. they play okay. too many games, if they play too many games up, they have to move up, is the honest okay. answer. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Maria, and thank you, Colette. Any more questions on this, guys? I have a quick question. So this is new on the score sheets. What happens if someone comes to a match using the old score sheets and this isn't on it? Do you do do does this get drawn on the score sheet or is it added attached to this to this to the score sheet? My understanding is that there sh it shouldn't happen. <laughs> it will happen. So <laughs> uh, not only it will happen, but it has happened because don't forget that we played uh, two games of the of this season before the lockdown. Um, I don't have the answer to that, so I will take it back. Um, Connor, if you can take those questions and uh, also the name of who's asking, uh, we'll try to get back to you on this. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Was it Pamela? Was it Pamela? Yep. Yep. Okay. Sorry, again, I can't see the, the faces there, so, but I remember Wait, the voice I, from I before. turned off the video when I was listening okay. to it. Yeah. Uh, there was a question there from Matteo, but Colette's answered it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and what was the question just for everybody? The question was, in the checklist, are delay sanctions considered disciplinary actions? 
Okay. The answer and is no. No, it's only where the cards are issued. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Colette. Thank you. And both. everyone can see that in the chat room, so that's fine. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna move on. So this is just the same thing. So guys, uh, the last bit is the signature. After the match is finished, signatures are collected to verify the results recorded in the score sheet. Once the captains and everybody else or the match official sign the score sheet, whatever is on the score sheet is, uh, it, it, it becomes formal. So make sure that, you know, as a captain or tell your captains that they need to check uh, what was going on. There have been cases where, you know, uh, a mistake was made on who the winning team is or the sets. Like I remember us winning a match 3-2 and then there was a 3-1 on there. So I had, I asked uh, the, the scorekeeper to, to fix it, I should have asked the second referee, but then it was fixed right in there before I signed. So make sure, bottom line, that before signing any everything, you actually read the terms and conditions. In this case, no, but you just review what you're signing. All right, uh, signatures will be obtained from the officiating members and captains and the conclusion of the match. Uh, the assistant scorer and the scorer sign the score sheets first. The the team captain then sign next. After the team captains have signed the score sheets, the second referee will check the score sheet and sign the approval box uh, as a verification of the match results. And then the last one that has the overall review is that the, um, the first referee will check the score sheet and sign the approval box as a verification. I think there might be one part that we might have missed on this presentation, Connor, and that is that um, once the match uh, is finished before, you know, the, the first referee has signed the score sheet, all parts that were not used on the score sheet needs to be crossed off, okay? Um, so all the, the, there shouldn't be any blanks so that nobody can be written afterwards. So all of this blank should, should have been uh, crossed off. He, equally on the player's list uh, here, all the blanks basically, they should be closed off. And then this is when the, um, the score, the first referee can sign the, the scorekeeper. We're gonna take a look at this and, and make sure that in how it's worded on the, on the rules. Um, and then we'll make sure that document is updated with the most up-to-date information. Now, because we are, wow, 18 minutes late, sorry about that. We're gonna go straight into the questions. And Connor, let's see if you can, oh, there were no questions coming up or were there any more questions coming through? No, there weren't actually. Um... Declan has just answered Pamela, but I'm going to get a, a, a official confirmation. But Declan's correct in that the office supplied uh, free score sheets to replace all the old ones. Yeah, and right. we also have new ones. So there is no reason or no excuse why any club shouldn't have them and shouldn't be using them. And I'm not sure the official uh, sanction that would happen. So I'll, I'll find that that and I'll get back to Pamela. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. Could I ask one question? Sorry. In a best of three set game, did you put the third set down on the five on the fifth on the five yeah, yeah? and just noted a set three instead yeah yeah okay that answer that. thank you <laughs> uh let me see if i color do you want to put the or maybe i can do here you go is this cross sheet uh is only recording writing as a sheet or also digitally right now it's only on paper it's only, hard, it's only a hard copy. There are some federations that are using a digital one, but we are not there yet. Uh, quick link on the chat with a quick survey. If you can take the time to um, fill in this survey, that would be great because your results will help us, you know, improving the delivery of this course. I apologize for the delay tonight, but if you have any questions, I can stay on for another 10 minutes and answer any questions of yours. I have a quick question, if that's okay. Just the sure. last thing you said, um, 
in relation to the score sheet was before the first referee will sign it, they'll kind of make sure that all the all the areas that haven't been used have been crossed off. I think that's a quite a sweeping statement. To like previously, we would have just crossed off if you got to twenty five, you cross off twenty six to forty or whatever it is, right? We would never have put lines across where the substitutions or whatever. So is that is that new this year that that has to be done and if so who actually does that because that's a lot of crossing out by a scorekeeper potentially at the end of a match so i can tell you uh, by experience that as a scorekeeper i have been doing this so in terms of whose responsibility would it be it would definitely be the responsibility of the scorekeeper if it's a rule i will need to double check because it wasn't on the presentation so i will need to double check on the fivb rules if this is a natural rule or if it was introduced to make sure that uh, no blank spaces were left. Okay. It would be good if, if, um, if you're sending out the, this presentation that you could put a, a sample of that so people can visually see what's expected from what's the end score sheet to actually what the blanks then get filled out, if that's possible. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but- Con- Sorry, just one question before um, y- before you continue. Connor, on this, uh, is this survey anonymous or is there a possibility to put the name of who's... I'm trying to understand how do we reach out to the people we that usually have attended. Don't. We usually just leave them anonymous. Um, in this particular one, I haven't asked for emails. We can, obviously, but um, generally we just leave it. Okay, we find I would more say... Honest. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. That's fair enough. I would say um, for those of you who've asked the question, if you can please take the time to write your email on the chat, we'll make sure that we will go back to whomever left their email on the chat. Otherwise, uh, if your email is not there and you know, and there's nothing we need to go back to you about, uh, you will find the presentation on the, um, on the Volleyball Ireland section in the next couple of days. You can always uh, email any of us. Um, Connor, do you want to put the the email for questions on the chat as well? Yeah. Uh, so it's well, it's education training at volleyballireland.com. So education training. Alfredo, while uh, Connor is writing the email, I have um, I just spotted that um, at the end of the um, of February said the um, last point. Where, this, where the last survey was circled. For example, it was 13, 25, this point was circled. But I saw in some score um, sheet, big number writing in the middle of the, um, of the point and circle. Do, do, do we need to do that or only circle this, the one behind the, serve, the last survey? Again, uh, I never put the, num- the big number at the, uh, at the middle of the, of the squares. Uh, I would only circle the final points. Okay. But again, this is one of those things, um, Maria, that I don't know if it's a best practice or if it's an actual rule. Okay. I need to go back and check what the official rules are. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions, anyone? No, silence is gold. Well, guys, if you have any further questions, um, email education training, education training at volleyballireland.com. If there were any questions that we didn't answer and we need to come back to you, either leave your email on the chat now or email education training and say, uh, was Pamela, I asked these questions, you, uh, I didn't get my answer, so that we will be able to pick them up afterwards, okay? Hello. Anything from your side, Connor? No, listen, just to thank you for your time tonight, oh. Alfredo, and your expertise on this. So I'm sure everyone's really grateful as well. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for giving up your time and, and your knowledge on this. Thank you. Thank you all, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Time. Thanks, Thanks Alfredo. Bye. Thanks. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. No, I'm just going to stop the... The, the recording, yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay. No, thank you. Um, yeah, a few we things go. we need, a few new things I need to work on there, and um, just a few bits and pieces. Um, 
but generally um, very useful, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. I'm gonna close, I'm gonna end the meeting, okay? Yeah, we'll talk to you soon.